For decades, scientists only had hints that something interesting was happening on Enceladus. Pictures from the Voyager spacecraft in the 1980s indicated that although this moon is small, only about 310 miles, or about 500 kilometers across, it is the most reflective body in our solar system. The Cassini spacecraft finally provided some answers when it revealed that there was a saltwater ocean hidden deep under its crust. This mysterious liquid is constantly being jetted out into space thanks to geysers erupting from cracks in Eucylus' ice surface. They do so at about 800 miles per hour, or 400 meters per second too. Along with this material are organic compounds brought up by these jets which form plumes through their interactions with other chemicals present on Saturn's small moon. These findings were published and will possibly be used for future explorations of outer solar system worlds like Pluto or Uranus where similar features exist. But could Enceladus contain life? There are three ingredients necessary for a living organism. Water, organic compounds, and energy sources. Cassini's findings of salt deposits on the moon suggest there is an ocean in contact with its rocky core. Formaldehyde, a chemical byproduct from bacteria, as well as acetylene gas were also detected by NASA scientists which could point to signs of organic compounds existing within the icy body, even perhaps early forms or organisms themselves. Cassini also detected molecular hydrogen as it flew through the Enceladus plumes in 2017 and found they contained carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. Hydrogen is a source of food for certain microbes around hydrothermal vents, so this makes sense scientists believe there may also be other sources nearby, like geysers or hot springs spewing from cracks near the South Pole. So how could Enceladus' underground ocean possibly support life, especially if there is no sunlight? Well, life does not always need light, it just needs energy to feed off. And it just so happens that this moon is full of energy. It gets some of its energy from the radioactive decay of elements within its core, but also from the massive friction from the tides. Saturn's mass causes a huge force of gravity on Enceladus, which pulls rocks and water, creating energy. When researchers detected molecular hydrogen in the plume of Enceladus, it was a sign that there is free energy available at sea level on Earth. This leads to interesting speculations about what could be happening below the surface because Arabic creatures consume organic matter and oxygen for energy. When these results were compared to free energy estimates here on Earth, it was determined that the values reported exceed that the minimum requirements for both anaerobic and aerobic metabolisms. Some scientists believe that life is possible in three different places, on the ocean floor, swimming in the ocean, or on the upper ocean where it meets the ice cap. Life here could strictly be in the form of microbes or have potentially evolved into something greater over the course of billions of years. There are currently no missions planned to go to Enceladus, but there have been a couple of proposals in recent years such as the Enceladus Life Finder. This mission was first proposed in 2015 and later again in 2017, but both times they weren't selected for funding. This doesn't mean it won't be selected in the future though. The mission concept would have ELF orbiter fly 8 to 10 times over a period of 3 years through plumes of water that are launched above the Enceladus. The geysers could provide easy access for sampling the moon's subsurface ocean, which may contain microbial life. Despite the fact that Enceladus is a possibility for supporting life, there may be no way of knowing whether or not it does. If Earth's pelagic zone is any indication to what might exist on this moon, then there will likely be very few manifestations in plume samples, if at all. However, there still may be hope a future aircraft does pick up microorganisms. That is, if they exist here. It turns out that wherever bubbles rise through water, they scrub the water columns so that any organisms and organic material become concentrated at the surface. And when these bubbles burst, like in an ocean spray or Enceladus jets, they may eject those microbes in a fine mist of droplets into space. Only time will tell. Another possible mission that some scientists are proposing at the John Hopkins University is the Orbilander. In theory, this spacecraft would orbit the moon for approximately 200 days before converting to a lander. Once its surveillance cameras find a suitable location to land, it would begin to descend until it lands on its surface. Orbital lander would rely on a complex suite of instruments to determine whether Enceladus's water has a blend of chemicals conducive for life as we know it, 
and search for amino acids, lipids, and cells. The orbital lander will carry with them some powerful tools including mass spectrometers that can weigh molecules down to the atomic level so they may analyze their chemical makeup. Orbital lander will intercept the plume from Enceladus, traveling through it and when it lands, it will capture the material as it falls back down. If it gets endorsed by NASA, the orbital lander would take a long time before it reaches Enceladus. Its launch date would not be until 2038 and the arrival at least 2050. Again, this is just a concept for now, but it would be amazing to see NASA provide the funding and begin development on this project. It's only a matter of time before one mission or another gets approved for Enceladus. It holds so much promise and could potentially hold the requirements for life as we know it. Whether that be in microbial form or something greater, I hope we find out someday. The search for extraterrestrial life has been ongoing since the first telescope was invented in 1608. The possibility of finding an extraterrestrial organism and solving one of humanity's oldest mysteries is tantalizing to say the least. It is human nature to want to find life outside or inside of our solar system. However, the discovery that we are not alone in the cosmos would be a profound revelation because it could answer one of humanity's oldest and greatest mysteries. How did life start on Earth? Do you think life exists on this moon? Let me know in the comments below. A lot of time and research goes into these videos every week. If you enjoyed watching, why not hit that subscribe button or just check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.